What is up guys, welcome back to the Wildcast. hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the denial of Ghislaine Maxwell's third request to be released on bail. Now, this is something I predicted when I made a video last week saying that, uh, as you guys can see here, Maxwell's bail request will be denied. Uh, and that is because I went through the government's arguments and they were very convincing. And I um, I knew then that, th that there's no way that she's gonna go get out on bail. So uh, let me show you guys the legal papers actually. Uh, I'm not gonna read them because I already know the arguments by heart. So I'll just tell you guys briefly what we went through in that video. So defendant Gillian Maxwell's third motion for bail uh, release on bail is denied. And that's by Judge Allison Nathan. If the court could conclude that any set of conditions could re reasonably assure the defendant's future appearance in court, uh, it would order the release. Yet, while her proposed bail package is substantial, it cannot provide such assurances. As a result, the court again determines that, quote, no condition or combination of conditions will reasonably assure the appearance of the defendant and it denies her motion for bail on this basis. And then, of course, the judge went into basically reiterating all the arguments that were made by the government because they were good arguments and they were based on law and extradition treaty law that between the Brit between Britain and the uh, and the and France. So I already covered this. So I'm going to link this that video in the top right hand corner. But but I want to just just review what I said in that video. OK, so when it comes to Britain, there are two problems. First of all, um, let's say she runs off to Britain, right? All she has to say to the British authorities is say that I was not in my right mind when I agreed to renounce my British citizenship. So um, I actually want to appeal uh, the U.S.'s decision or, or order or request to extradite me back to the U.S. And that would that would mean that that she appeals the decision that goes into the U.K. courts and it takes something like six to 12 months to fully, uh, fully uh, resolve that situation. OK, which and that means that all the people here in America, we all have to wait until the British legal system catch us up uh, to processing uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. And then I'm sure uh, after the, the takes case place, uh, she will appeal that decision. Uh, so it will take a long time for that to go through the UK courts while this uh, while the uh, the victims have to wait here and all the court proceedings come to a halt. OK, so um, so that's that's if they decide to grant her extradition. But but they can easily say that Ghislaine Maxwell was treated way too harshly in the Metropolitan Detention Center. It only takes one judge to determine that she is not um, her health is not safe. Right. That's an argument that they've already made in court. It only takes one conservative or, or, you know, libertarian UK judge to say that her human rights were being violated and therefore we can't extradite her. This is what happened with Julian Assange. Now, in that case, we all like that because, you know, we know that Julian Assange is innocent. We're on his side. Most people are most people who know about the case. But in this case, they would not be good. OK, if the UK denies extradition. So. The UK is a pretty safe place place for her no matter what. Uh, she'll get to uh, avoid justice for a while, uh, even if they decide to extradite her. But there is a small possibility that they, the UK court can decide that she can stay in the UK as a citizen. OK, because like I said, she can claim that she was not in her right mind. And that's in UK extradition law. It says that if a person is not in in their right mind, uh, state of mind, when they renounce their citizenship, then the citizenship stands. OK, that is something they can claim and they can try to prove that in court. So there you go. That's Britain. Now, France is even worse. OK, and the judge actually uh, let me actually read you guys what the judge said about France, because France extradition law is very clear. They almost never extradite anybody. OK, so this is what the judge said. The nationality of the person sought shall be the nationality of that person at the time the offense was committed. So what does that mean? That means that her renouncing her citizenship in 2021 has no material impact on on the law, on, on the legal proceedings there. And they then France would be under no obligation to extradite her. You know why? Because back in 1994 to 1997, when these crimes were committed by Ghislaine Maxwell, allegedly, um, uh, she was a citizen of France. So there's no way for her to get rid of her citizenship because when these crimes were committed, according to the law, the extradition treaties only consider if, if she was a citizen when the crimes were committed. So her renouncing her citizenship to France now means zero zip. And by the way, she was born in France. So she was a citizen of France before she was a citizen of the UK or of uh, of America, of the US. OK, so that's another point. So France is just a free zone for her. If she goes there, then she's never coming back. OK, and she like, I don't even know why she would even go to Britain because that's more trouble. She would she'd just go to France and she'll be safe. They're not going to extradite her. So there you go. That's the uh, extradition thing. Let's move on to the conservatorship, which is the other argument they made. 
made. So Ghislaine Maxwell's side said that Ghislaine Maxwell will be uh, giving up most of her assets to a private conservator um, and that she will not have the money to run away and, and, you know, use her riches to run away, which is the argument that the government made. But um, as I uh, dissected in that video in the last video the government goes on to explaining that the conservator is paid by Ghislaine Maxwell she, she is paying him so the court has no authority over this conservator so he can do whatever Gil he's going to do whatever Ghislaine Maxwell says because Ghislaine Maxwell is signing his checks okay and um so it was it was crazy like it, on the surface of oh, these look like good arguments right but that's why you need to dive into the law behind this stuff and and the and the and the ways that she can escape this stuff because there's a lot of technicalities in all these things that that happen in the legal system that allows people to get away so we need to look into things deeper and if the government never looked into the extradition laws uh if they had really bad lawyers then they would have never caught that stuff and the judge might have even allowed it okay so that's why it's important to do your research um, anyway, so the conservator is not has the court has no authority over the conservator. The conservator is paid by Ghislaine Maxwell, which means he's under her will. And um, she says that she's only going to be taking out four hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars for her legal expenses and living expenses. But how are we going to verify that? And it, even if that's the case, how, how do you, how could we guarantee that she uses that four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for for actually her legal expenses, right? And and again, like, because you know she can say that oh yeah this is this money is for my living expenses and legal expenses, but she can use it for anything else, right? So another problem is we don't actually know how much money she has. Remember that she lied in her original um uh when the when the when she was originally arrested back in twenty twenty in in June or July, they actually the when you when you when you're registered as a as a um a prisoner they actually you have to tell them how much you know what your assets are and she lied about her assets i don't know what the number was it was like less than five million dollars that she said she had but it turns out together with her husband she has over 28 million dollars it was like what 28.5 or 28.7 million whatever the last bail the second bail uh, amount was she has that so she she's already lied to the court about the amount of money she has so we have no idea if she has other money hidden somewhere else that she hasn't told the court about Right. So there's no way to verify how much money she actually has. And there's no way to verify that the conservator is actually doing his job to to limit her access to money. And even if he was, we have no way to verify that the money is being used for what she says it's being used for. OK, so for all these reasons, she denied the uh, third bail request. And I think they're going to give up after this. It doesn't matter. Like there's they've literally tried everything they can. And the court is not buying it because there's good legitimate reasons to be skeptical about the things that she's promising here. OK, so there you go. Um, yes, I made the video under uh, 10 minutes. But anyways, that's what that's basically what's going on. If you want further details, uh, go watch the video that I'm going to link in the top right hand corner. And I dive into more details about the extradition laws and everything that I uh, talked about that the government lawyers talked about last last week or two weeks ago. So check out that video if you want more details. But that's it for this one. As always, if you want to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. Also by joining channel memberships below. I do regular updates on this case. When the trial starts, I'll be covering it every single day or whenever significant um, results come out. So with that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. That being said, see you next time. Peace. Crushed and filled with all I found